Welcome to our podcast, Forward Through Faith, a Visleta Lutheran Mission Human Care, where the Word of God relates to you. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Forward Through Faith, an outreach ministry of the Isleta Lutheran Mission here in beautiful El Paso, Texas. I'm Scott Yingle. With me in the studio today is... Carla Gonzalez. Hello, everyone. It's a joy being with y'all. My name is Lou Soto. And making all this possible is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yes, God. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit's using Miguel Munoz behind the computer screens in the other rooms. So Behind all the technology, right? Which we are not that good. <laughs> not at all. We just sit and speak where we are asked to speak. Yes. <laughs> and Miguel gives us funny facial expressions of what's going on. To keep anyway. a smile. It's probably him being filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes, probably. it is, for anyway. sure. Anyway, mm-hmm. hey, th- and thank you. Thank you all for being here, and we pray that the Holy Spirit guides our podcast. Uh, the Word of the Lord is the heart of what we this podcast is about, and we just pray that the Holy Spirit moves through this podcast to you, to your life, makes an impact in your life, is relevant, and we pray that you share it with others, um, that they may hear the good news of salvation. Um, Today's topic is, well, we've kind of phrased it in a question, what is more amazing than a miracle? Well, let's find out. Um, We're based on Acts 3, verses 11 through 21. So get your Bibles ready, and we'll start with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day of life and your word and the resurrection of your son. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And that fills us with new hope and power and encourages to go forward in faith and sharing your love and your grace with others. We pray for everybody here, for everybody who is listening to this message that you will refresh them and that you will touch their lives and that you will bring them to salvation and eternal life. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Thank you. Well, before we have Luce read Acts 3 for us, there's a few thought-provoking questions that we wanted to maybe kind of put out there to kind of get your mind thinking as, as you listen to these words of the Lord. And these thought-provoking questions are what's the worst thing someone did to you? How do you feel about that or about that person? Here's another one. What's the worst thing that you ever did or are living with? So with those questions in, the, in, in, the, in your mind, let's go to the words of God Acts 3, 11 through 21. When he clung to Peter and John, all the people, utterly astounded, ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people. Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power of piety we have made him walk? the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The God of our fathers glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. Amen. 
This is the word of the Lord. Amen. And this is the 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 topic what we're going to base on the to- the uh, podcast. So, what's more amazing than a miracle? Here we see a fantastic miracle happening. What happens? And and, and actually, yeah, a, a lame man is being healed by the power of the name of Jesus, right? It and wasn't the Peter faith? or Paul or, no. or or John that did it, but and we're just in a season full of miracles. We just saw oh. and we remember uh, Jesus' resurrection uh, two weeks ago or so. And then last week we were seeing this group of people in community and in selflessness selling everything to live in community and to have everything in common and to help the needy. And then it only seems like it's growing growing to become like a more a more bigger or greater miracle and then we are in the face of this man who has been lame for 40 years God. since birth since birth he was born like that and he was brought to this area to beg by many many knew him they knew that he was lame that he wasn't able to walk by himself and then suddenly he's clinging to Peter and to John and he is asking for healing. And now going back to your questions, you're asking, what is the worst that I have done or that somebody has done to me? I know that we all can think of something, Scott. Um, I know that we all, if we dig within ourselves, we can recognize ourselves in this lame man. I was born a sinner, and so did everybody else. I was born lame, and I'm not able to come to the place where the help can be found by myself. Somebody else has to bring me, and then all, all that I can do without the truest miracle is just be a beggar. And Jesus, or in this case, his apostles, Peter and John, came to this man. We, in our sin, we're 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 separate from. We we don't want to be with God. We want to have it our way. Our uh, you know, we talked last week about you know, I want it my way. My it's my life. I'll live it the way I want. Okay, Jesus has to come and intervene. Yes, and it was the power of this Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus Christ that Peter and John healed yes. this man. And what happened? What happened when this when this miracle occurred? And we were also seeing how, <clears throat> and referencing to some other reading that we're going to share today or that we're going to be referencing to Luke 24, 36, 40, we know that the disciples were scared, they were hiding, they didn't have him in then at this time to go out and preach. But then miracle after miracle has been happening since the resurrection of Christ in these passages that we're being uh, sharing. And we can see how the power is being given by the Holy Spirit to his believers to go believe, to go heal, to go proclaim. And we we're here wondering okay what is the relationship between something the most terrible thing that i've done and 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 the miracles well in this story we see the lame man and we our eyes tend to go to the shiny miracle and we're just like that we're human but a bigger miracle is happening there not only the disciples are being strengthened and moved by the Holy Spirit to preach and heal, they're preaching to the same people who are sometime back was shouting, crucify him. They were Jesus's murderers. They killed Jesus. They also did a terrible thing just like you and I. And that, that is what's more amazing than the miracle of this guy born lame 
lame for 40 years, Mm -hmm. all of a sudden has this gift that you and I probably take for granted, the ability to walk Mm -hmm. across a campus or walk across our house or to get out of bed, to go to the kitchen. This guy didn't have that ability, but this, this fact that Peter and John are coming to the people that crucified Mm -hmm. the Son of God. Can you imagine? I can't even fathom if a person, you know, to, to I, I want to kill God. Kill God. Crucify him. You know what I was, well, we were preparing for this, uh, for this podcast. And the topic that we're reading right today, the Bible study that we're basing this, uh, we are reminded of the people who just a couple of days before Christ, uh, God, Jesus was crucified, all the people yelling, uh, Hosanna and receiving him in glory. And that was too a miracle. That was a miracle too. But then uh, now in this amazing story, in this amazing Bible passage that has a lot of like people involved, we see this group of people which Pe- Peter addresses them as sons of Israel if I'm not mistaken, right? Israelites. These were the group of people who, like I said before, a couple of days before or a a time before, they were there shouting, crucify. And this passage says something really, really, uh, it's it's just mind-blowing. And it calls these people like it is, you kill the author of life. And suddenly they're in the, it, they, they're, they have it in their faces to acknowledge, yes, I was this person. I was there. I was shouting, crucify him. So there is no denial. So the, we too, Scott, like when the questions that you were doing this morning, uh, when we started, what is the worst thing that has been done to you? How does it feel? What? have you done to others that confronts us scott there is no denial that there is no way around that we are also evil and that we also kill the author of life in our lives every day and and what does jesus do (laughs) on the cross what did jesus say on the cross He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. And in Romans 5, verse 8, God demonstrates his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And in our text, in Acts 3, 19 and 20, what does it say? Peter says to these people that crucified Jesus, the Son of God, he says the unthinkable, the unimaginable by our, by our worldly standards. Who could do this? Any one of us. Somebody that uh, murdered your child or murdered your, your mother. Yeah, in a terrible way. Sitting in a courtroom. See, that guy deserves to get whatever he gets. But no... No, the love of Jesus speaking through his apostles, repent therefore and turn back that your sins may be blotted out, blotted out, erased, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send the Christ appointed for you. Jesus. Yeah. And it is good that you mentioned that because when the disciples were uh, all um, behind doors and they were all scared and all of this was happening, and when Christ resurrected, appeared to them, what is the first thing that he said to them? Peace. Peace, Peace to you. Oh, Peter. You deny me three times. You're an awful person. Get out of here. I don't want to see you. That's 
according to the world, right? Where were you guys? I was on the cross. I didn't see any of you guys. I Where know. were you? You abandoned me. I know. You see, guys, I told you what I was going to do, and you didn't believe. No. The first thing that he said to them is peace. And that's the same thing that, it, that God died to bring to us. Forgiveness of sin, peace, even to those that we might deem unforgivable. We might see somebody that, okay, that person, it's beyond forgiveness. Nobody is beyond forgiveness. Jesus. And that's really what the greatest miracle is. It's the miracle of not being separated from God anymore. Because in all honesty, all of these miracles, this miracle of the lame man, it comes part and parcel with the power and faith in Jesus Christ. It is what it is. But forgiveness, forgiveness is something that God granted to us through Christ. And it is through the power of the Holy Spirit that we are able to forgive others, that we are able to let go of the things that cripple our spirit, that blind our hearts, that deafen our compassion for others. And this is what, this is the application of this now. We, too, are afraid. We, too, hide. We also are ashamed of things that we have done, that have been done to us, and everything that involves that. But Jesus Christ, in the miracle of his death and his resurrection, frees us from that, where you are actually able to see people care for their abusers, for example, if a father abused you and you find healing and you find Christ, you find that forgiveness, you let go of that hate and that father is now senile and needing to be taken care of, it's the power of the Holy Spirit that makes it possible for us to do something selfless, like take care of those who have hurt us, to love. I've heard stories of people who have welcomed their children's murderers into their home after probation because they live in Jesus Christ. It does not negate the fact that you did what you did. It doesn't negate the fact that these Pharisees, these, Pharisees, these Israelites, these disciples, they did what they did to deny, to betray, to abandon, to kill. We do, we cannot deny what we do, but it is through the power of Jesus Christ's resurrection that he tells us this is the full forgiveness that I give you. That is what makes the greatest miracle, which is to transform us into a person that we, it's, the world cannot recognize because it's a person that is no longer of the world. We're simply just in the world. And it is, that is right there what we get. A miracle, forgiveness. First Timothy 2, verse 4, Paul reminds us that God, our Savior, desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth, not living in ignorance like these people that crucified Jesus did. And Carla, earlier as we prepared, you made a good comment Today, <laughs> ignorance, can we really use that as, as an excuse? So much we know who Jesus is. We're given the whole 66 books of the Bible to, f to know the, the words of God, to know who God is, for him to speak to us. Do we have that excuse? There is no way I bet that in some part of our lives we have all encountered Jesus some way or another, he has made it possible. He has reached to us. He has sent, hey, a podcast. After, after today, if you're listening to this, there is no ignorance anymore. The truth is that we are sinners and we may all, uh, we need all a miracle. Hey, a miracle of healing, a miracle of a job, a miracle of restoration in a family. We all need miracles. But nevertheless, the most important miracle that each one of us need is forgiveness of sins. 
and God has provided that for us. So what is more amazing than a miracle? The forgiveness that Christ won in the cross for you and I. The faith that we have, just like Peter and John, the faith in the name of Jesus, that not can only take us to be, be a lame in, 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 in this life, not just a physical lame, but a spiritual lame, and now give us true life. And no matter what we did, Christ died to free us and as the text says, to refresh, mm-hmm. to refresh us, yes. to get us out of this 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 bondage of of what's happened to us in the past or or these sins that we struggle with now, Christ died to free us and to refresh us mm-hmm. and to give us new life, to reconcile us to Him. Mm-hmm. That that is more amazing than a miracle. We were saying, Scott, that even the person who has cancer today and receives the miracle of healing is still going to die in a couple of years. That person still needs forgiveness and eternal life. That is greater than a miracle. Yeah, it's, it's better to, to be you know, at peace, to, to know Christ, yes. and have the worst, worst infection than to go to, to die <laughs> With a, with a body that's buff and that's fit, healthy. And, you yes. know, <laughs> yeah. what's better? It doesn't mean that we don't pray for that miracle of healing yes. because you know what? God will yes. give you healing if it is in his will to do so for the purpose that you are created for. And we pray not because we will receive, but because it's how we connect with the God that made it possible for us to be able to come before him now. Through Jesus Christ, we can come to him as we go to our Father who is loving and who cares and who wants to hear and who wants to give us what is good. And sometimes the good doesn't look good to us, But when we look at God and we know that he is a good God, then we know whatever it is that we're handling, there will be good in it. It is on the giver (laughs) that we focus and not the gift. One of my my favorite Bible verses, Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, because I know the plans that I have for you, plans of good. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, is for good. And that, and by having Christ, we will have peace. Yes. Throughout all the struggles that we're, we live in a sin, a sin-filled world, mm-hmm. some of it is our own fault. You know, the things that we do, it, some things come from outside. Yes. But in Christ, we have that peace. He will come to us, and we will know peace. Real quick, I, 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 there's, a, there's a hymn that I thought that I came across as I was preparing for the study. I'd love to share it. Um, it's, To God Be the Glory. And in verse 2, it goes, O perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Mm -hmm. Think about that. The vilest offender, put your name in there, if we believe from that moment from Jesus, a pardon receives. Amen. Who would like to close us in prayer? Father, thank you. Thank you for your forgiveness. Forgive us because it is true we do not know what we do. Forgive us because your son Jesus died in the cross for our sins and because he has won that forgiveness for us. Grant us your peace. Grant us knowledge so that we cannot walk through life in ignorance anymore. Give us hunger to know you, to grow in the faith, and help us to live in the peace and the refreshing that Christ wants for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. To keep learning more about God's Word, join us at San Pablo Lutheran Church located at 301 South Chutes in El Paso, Texas, or call us at 915-858-2588. To learn more about our ministries, visit our website, www.ylm.org.